Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Certification. We are in chapter one talking about fundamentals of testing and today we shall be continuing with our next segment that is 1.2 why testing is important or why testing is necessary. So let's quickly have a look what this segment of this chapter has to talk about. So as a part of this segment, all we are trying to add is the value of what testing adds to the overall contribution of success of a product. Now testing contribution to the overall success certainly talks about the various activities being conducted at any point of time. Many people, as we discussed in 1.1, think that testing is limited to writing test cases and execution of these test cases, which happens pretty later and in the life cycle. But if I consider the SDLC model and talks about the testing contribution, it starts right from the beginning of the SDLC model. That means right from the requirement gathering phase, a tester is someone who is responsible to go ahead and review the requirements and contribute by finding ambiguities, contradictions, inconsistencies, omissions related to that. Indeed, in simple words, all we are trying to do is analyze the information and report any kind of confusions, unclear requirement, incomplete information to the author. In this case, the author would be the product owner or the business analyst. But the point is, testing gets started right from there. So of course, there are two types of testing which we all know. We have static testing and dynamic testing. Static testing is without executions when you review the work products or documentation and find anomaly in that is what I call it as static testing. Whereas if I talk about running the product and testing it dynamically, I call it as dynamic testing. So we will talk about static and dynamic testing in more detail in our chapter two and chapter four. For now, static testing is something which kicks off right at the beginning of the SDLC and testers are just not limited to that of the dynamic testing. Another important point here is to talk about that one, I can talk about static and dynamic. And second important thing is the part of the larger project management activity that is contributing to decisions to move to the next stage of the SDLC model. That means we are consistently providing those critical information to the management that how exactly our testing is progressing in the context of reaching the required coverage or identifying the defects. At the same time, any other you know identifications regarding the risk or any kind of defects to be close prior to moving to the next stage. And that all puts together in terms of management to make a decision on how exactly can we move ahead or should we continue to do something more there. Talking about testing provides users with indirect representation of the development project, where testers ensure that their understanding of the user's need are considered throughout the software development lifecycle. That means tester not only performs the activities, but at the same time looks forward to gain the required confidence on the product's quality. If I as a tester is not confident about the quality of the product, I will not be able to give a go ahead to any of the production team or the management, including the release management. So there's no point releasing a product which is not like a tester is not confident about the same. So in that context, the testing certainly contributes to the overall understanding, acceptance, confidence, coverage, and then push it across to the next module. Also, testing may also be required to meet contractual or legal requirements or to comply with regulatory standards. Now, it's not necessary that every single product will have this into consideration, but contractual things like timelines, the required level of coverage and etc. comes as a part of contractual agreement. When it comes to the legal requirements, could be related to the things which are like uh, medicines or talking about banking or, you know, any other things like automotive and all. So they do have related legal requirements and there are of course many products around you like including the appliances the phones or any other products which are embedded systems they have to go through the regulatories which are like allowed amount of things so for example if i'm talking about the radiation being emitted by a cell phone has a limitation that means what amount of radiation can be you know emitted from the phone and if your phone is emitting more than that required regulatory then of course, your phone will not release to the market. And that's where a lot of phones are banned by default before releasing them. Also, the second important topic we are talking about is differentiating between QA and QC. Uh, indeed, QA and QC are two very important terms a testing 
team or the test engineer should be aware of. Many people think we are the quality assurance as QA. But let me tell you, as a tester, you are not a QA, you are actually a QC. Of course, surprising, right? So we are actually trying to tell you those things which we may have never understood in our past experience so far. So what is QA and how QA is different from QC? QA is basically defined as a process or it's a set of person or people put together who define how you can achieve quality in a product. Now that how can be answered by the techniques, the approaches, the methods, the test cases, the amount of testing, the number of test cases, and the timeline of executing them, right? So the entire approach definition is done by someone or set of people called as QA. So in simple words, test manager is someone who is called as a QA, whereas QC is a person or a team of member who performs all the defined you know, activities by the QA. That means writing the test cases, preparing the environment, preparing the test data, executing the test cases, logging the defect, tracking the defect, performing retesting, regression testing. That means QC is all about the activity driven approach. That means performing those activities, implementing those approaches is what you call it as quality control. So in simple words, my test engineer is a quality control. Now, is that like you might be thinking that is this something we are going wrong with? that the whole world is calling an engineer, test engineer as QA? Answer is no, not absolutely correct. Why? Because only the software industry does that, not the other hardware industries. For example, if you go to a hardware industry where even a simple screwdriver is made, that is being tested, but that is tested by a QC, not by QA, right? But why do software industries making a mistake instead of calling you as QC, why are they calling you as a QA? Because only in software industry, you have the privileges to contribute to the improvement of the process. In hardware industry, I do not ask testers to contribute to the process. All I give them is a set of test cases or ask them to write the test cases and execute them. But when it comes to the process improvement, only QA, that is managers, take the decision about it. But in software industry, a tester is allowed to contribute back to the process and add more value. In that context, the software industry prefers to call you as a QA engineer rather than a QC. So just to differentiate, now in software industry, we call you as QA engineer and the QAs will be called as QA manager. So that's a slight difference what we need to remember and understand. So QA defines the process, QC implements the process. Additionally, we are all talking about some of the common keywords like error, mistake, and uh, we have failures, root causes, etc. So let's see exactly the difference between the mistake, uh, error, defect, and failure is. So first of all, I have two words which I'm talking about is error and mistake. Now, as per ISTQB, mistake and error are exactly the same. They're just the synonyms where mistake is a generic word and error is something which is relevant to the programming. But what is the definition of mistake? Now that definition is defined by me, so you won't find that as a part of the syllabus. So when humans do anything wrong unintentionally, that is what is called as a mistake. But that mistake, when it is performed in a programming environment, I do not call it as a mistake, rather prefer to call it as error. So mistake and error are exactly the same when a human does anything wrong unintentionally, but just the differences between the environment, what we have. So in general world, you use mistake as a word, whereas in programming world, you use as error. On the same way, if I further continue, I do have few words like, you know, defects, which are also called synonymously as faults and bugs, where the basic definition to defect is, it is a deviation between expected and actual result. So it's not that like uh, it has anything else to do, like fault has a different definition or bug has a different definition. In fact, bug is a very informal name as per ISTQB for a defect. It's an informal name, not a formal name. And uh, the fault is the synonym of defect in the hardware industry. So when you're making products like appliances, electrical products and all, if something goes wrong or something is not working as expected, I call it as fault. For example, if an electrical switch is not working, you call it as faulty switch rather than calling it as a defect, right? But when it comes to software industry, I prefer to call it as defect because that's a more, you know, relative keyword related to the softwares. But the definition remains the same. When things are not working as expected, you call it as a defect. Whereas the third word here is called as failure. The failure is the word which basically is an approach to identify the defect. 
approach to identify the defect. That means when you run a test case and if that test case fails, is what I call it as a failure. Many people go in the discussion towards the release failure, the product failure. Let me tell you the whole syllabus is talking everything before the release. They, they are not talking about anything after release. So we have to limit all our understanding before the release what we do. Failure is an approach that helps you to find defects. That means when you run a test case and if the expected is not equal to actual, you call it as a fail. And that's put together is the failure as an approach. So in other words, if I have to use all these keywords together, I can make a statement that a tester is someone who is responsible to conduct as many failures as possible on the system so that defects can be identified and corrected where defects are due to errors or mistakes. Mistakes can be related to requirements also. Another important thing what we are covering in the same is that the difference or relationship between uh, the error, defect, failure and root cause. Now error and defects are not only the cause of failures. Failures can also be caused by environmental conditions such as when radiations or electromagnetic field uh, causes defects in firmware. A root cause is basically the real reason behind it. So it is the fundamental reason for the occurrence of the problem. And it's not necessary that uh, the root cause is what you see as a defect. Sometimes root cause can be anything. For example, I was not able to log into Facebook and uh, uh, I had no internet connection. So I was thinking that my login credentials are not working. But when I realized the root cause was that I was not connected to internet. So you can very well correlate that the defect and root cause can be totally different from each other. And that could be far, far away. So a tester has to understand the difference between the error and the root cause or the defect and the root cause because a root cause can be different and can be contributing to multiple other elements of the application. So whenever a developer fixes a defect, basically that person is fixing the root cause. And if the root cause is contributing to further other elements or modules, then they may have side effects of this fix. And that's where it is very important for a tester to measure the regressions introduced by these fixes. So that's where when the root causes are fixed, we look forward to uh, conduct a regression testing also, just to make sure that the fix of a defect has not introduced anything as a side effect. So it is believed that further similar failures or defects can be prevented or their frequency reduced by addressing the root cause, such as by removing it. So I think put together, all we wanted to explain you is that how error defects fault uh, uh, failure and root causes are related to each other and how exactly they do contribute to the overall conduction of testing. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.